All right, let's do this quick. All right, check him out. It's a form of life. Many forms of life are dreaming a dream, as we do. And there are several theories about dreams. Um, one particular theory comes to mind. The theory that dreams are of a past life, of past happenings, and the goals that you have in a dream, where you're going and such, those are all determined by you, obviously, at that current time. That's something you have control over while you're dreaming. That's always something. But it's the nouns, the persons, the places, the things that always are foreign. And in such, in the theory of past lives, it would make sense because it's all stuff that you know about, but when you're born with a clean, clean slate, it's not like you know know them. They're, uh, they're hidden. And the brain, there's still so much about the brain that we don't know, so it's very possible. I myself was a skeptic of future happenings though. It's future happenings that seem even more unlikely. A lot of people claim to have dreamed the future though. And the other day, I believe I did too. It's a rather odd and peculiar dream. I was walking down a street trying to find my way home after a long day. And the street I was walking on was named NFL ST. ST for street. And I thought to myself, well, I haven't been past this yet. I must be lost. And I thought I could either turn around or I could keep going. And there might actually be a street named NFL Street now. But I looked up to my right and I noticed a giant dome. And it was very awestrucking. So uh, I, I paid close attention to the dome out of curiosity, and it was almost—it almost looked like it was in a sort of bowl, with that had like wavy lines on it, and it was just like a big ball inside of it with uh, in carved lines, lines like engraved into it, and in between the lines were these these symbols, these words. And they weren't in English, they were of a foreign language, like symbols, almost like the Aztecs. And so I looked to my left and I noticed all the traffic, all the cars go going kind of really, really slow, like rush hour, and there were just people filling up the streets, getting in the way. And there were people walking all over the sidewalk, like there were thousands of people, it was so busy. And there was a unfenced boardwalk just across from the street, so I got up I went up a steps and I proceeded to go uh, to a boardwalk, go to the boardwalk and when I was in there I met some people that I knew, people that I don't actually know right now, but when I was in the dream I felt like I knew them and I knew their names, that was the weird part, even though I don't actually know them now. And I said hey and you know, I was kind of lost and they were going to the same place I was so we all just sort of went together. And, uh, some big guy came along that we also knew from school. Um, he came along pointing out that my shirt was like a, it was a poor person's shirt that, and I'm not poor at all right now, so it can't be from this life. But, I would remember such a weird dream, such a weird happening, actually. But, I looked at my shirt and on it was an animal and it was an alligator and it was like a band or something and he showed he was talking about his shirt how his was white and it was like a, a better band and whatever and i wanted to impress everybody so for some reason i just started throwing up and i puked up these animal uh stickers animal stickers and they were all alligators and i was like when I woke up, I was like, what the hell? Alligators? I hate alligators. Why was I dreaming about alligators? Alligators suck. I hate them. <laughs> so, I thought it was pretty odd that I must have been some little kid in a past life that ate animal stickers. Weird little kid or something. Or maybe it was a future life. Who knows? 
Um, and I noticed my, my, the body I was in was fairly short. And right now I'm really tall. I'm six four, so I'm not at all short, and <laughs> nothing's taller than me. <laughs> and so I woke up doing a little bit of research on the dome, and I came to realize that the dome doesn't even exist. Not yet. No golden domes that look like that. Not even by the same shape. So I. I did some, a little bit more research on the possibilities of, of perceiving the future in your dreams. There are several got there are several people who have actually dreamed the future and had it come true. Not just like 9/11 or uh, disasters, but one guy he dreamed up his future like in his dream he met his future wife and he got her phone number and it was the same phone number as what she'll have in the, in the future when he meets her and it's pretty interesting that he dreamed about her when he didn't even know her yet it was years before and so there was another guy actually that that guy I don't know, uh, David Brown a British man and this other guy uh, Chris Robinson of Dunstable Massachusetts He's well known in Japan now for solving crimes using his dreams. It's kind of weird, but he's got his own TV show. And he's currently helping a woman whose daughter died in a plane crash. He's helping her find the daughter's body. And there's actually new research on neurotransmission that goes into how the brain controls movement with a location of thoughts that determine what you will do sort of like uh, showing this basically meaning that your thoughts are predetermined and uh, scientists have actually discovered that this predetermination happens within the language area well actually I realized that like I realized that they're in the same area that this predetermination is happening in the same area of the brain that determines language, uh, determines what kind of words you're going to use to communicate with other people. Sort of like a problem-solving part of the brain. Um, it's the same part of the brain that's used to throw a ball at a target or shoot a gun. The use of angles and patterns to interact with your life, the life around you. Um, such a part of the brain is called is actually called the ventral lateral prefrontal vortex cortex uh, it's kind of a big name but it's basically a part of the brain that's pretty small uh, small and hidden and it's susceptibly low to being damaged so if you were to hit your head or break some bones and one of those bones happen to be like your spinal cord you'd still be able to function and, you know, call for help and make decisions. Because, you know, when you walk around and stuff, it's not like you think, okay, go. You know? You think, you don't have to think about it to make it happen. Because it requires millions of neurons to make make it happen. You know, it's, a, it's an efficient reaction from a quick predetermined chemical transfer of data. The, the brain has already predetermined goals, which leaves open to the possibility of being controlled, actually, if you think about it, like being hacked, like how you hack a computer. Possibly the greys have mastered this hacking with a sort of uh, implant that they put in the brain, possibly put in your brain. As it is, scientists already know how to put miniature microbes on your on your neuro like on a single neuron to interact with your body you know they're already getting closer and closer to being able to do something like force you to walk or force you to do something force you to get on a knee it would be very hard to upload that sort of information into somebody though But it's all up for you to decide. Dreams are something to be enjoyed because 
It is knowledge of your past that can help your future. Thanks for listening. I'm Brennan Lundgren. Uh, My friends call me Bones, because I have big, huge fucking knuckles. Yeah. Yeah. Bony. Big bones. Anyways, uh, thanks for listening. Hopefully I helped.